In today's Veterans Day episode of Facism, we honor a World War II veteran from California who served at a time when family members were put in detention camps. Our colleague David Ono recently traveled with him to France where he is being remembered as a hero. Let's go back to a time when our country was fighting for survival against truly evil forces. World War II gave us some of the most difficult yet greatest lessons in history. And if we're paying attention, lessons that continue to teach. In this episode of Facism, American Hero. Flying over the Vosges Mountains of eastern France is a stunning sight. Inside this dense forest is a remarkable story. And to find it, follow this vehicle. On board, people in uniform and a man with a giant smile. His name is Lawson Sakai. When Lawson comes to visit this picturesque village of Briers, they celebrate. There are parades, and he leads them. But why does this 96-year-old Japanese-American man, who was born and raised in Montebello, mean so much to these French citizens? Our ship was going like this. Just before heading to France, I sat down with Lawson at his home, and he shows me this picture from October of 1944. That's him, a dashing, rugged young man the day before his 21st birthday. This was taken as he was about to go into the town, where today he is so loved. We're getting ready to go to battle. Bobby Maeda from Hawaii, he lost his right arm next day. Lawson was part of the U.S. Army's 100th 442nd, often called Nisei. It was a segregated unit of Japanese Americans. Some fought even as their families were unjustly locked up in camps. Others were from Hawaii. Together, they made up one of the toughest fighting units in U.S. history, driven by the desire to prove their patriotism. Their mission on this day was to liberate Briers, one of the most beautiful French communities you could imagine. But in 1944, the town had been under Nazi control for five years, enduring horrible atrocities. Lawson remembers the moment the battle began. And we're going down both sides of the road, and all of a sudden the Germans started firing. Well, the fire wasn't coming from the city where the buildings were. It was coming from the hills. The Germans were using the dense forest and the series of hills surrounding the town. The Nisei would have to go into the dark, frightening woods and get them. Going through the forest is really horrible. German artillery was adjusted to explode at the top of the trees. Not only was the blast and hot metal deadly, but also the splintering wood. Lawson was hit. But I thought I was dead. You know, it's so painful and hot, and it, you know, it just, you can't breathe. You just kind of curl up in a ball, and you think it's the last breath they're going to take. It took 10 bloody days in the forest and the town to push the Germans out. Bullet holes still riddle the town church. The price was tragically high. The Nisei lost so much in that forest. I Company was hardest hit, going in with 187 men and walking out with eight. Epidel Cemetery, just a short drive from Briers, is where so many American heroes are laid to rest. Two brave men defied the Air Force orders, tried to fly their planes to the men. Unfortunately, he lost his life. In the 10 times Lawson has been back, he's always made it a point to visit his friends who never came home. But there is an amazing byproduct to this tragedy. The citizens of Briers, from the day they were liberated, said that they would never forget. And they have it. School children are taught this story and then care for their graves. And the most incredible part, the soldiers driving these vintage vehicles are French citizens pretending to be the Nisei. They are reenactors. There are hundreds of them. They have meticulously refurbished the vehicles left behind. They copy the Nisei's uniforms to the stitch. And the tradition is handed down with each generation. There is no attention paid to the color of one's skin. 
It is only about the content of one's character. And when the real Nisei veterans come to visit, it is a celebration. But as the years go by, our heroes have disappeared. And last summer, Lawson was the last one who could make that trip. And as he pulls away and waves and blows a kiss goodbye, this would be his last trip too. Lawson passed away earlier this year, and with that, we lost one of the biggest smiles and greatest representatives of this amazing group of heroes. But as we fly over this beautiful place, the lessons live on. Courage, gratitude, love, unity. Even though most in our country have never heard this story, for this community, it will forever be part of who they are. So Lawson was special because he was one of the few willing to talk about those difficult days in World War II. So many kept it to themselves. But Lawson taught us about the prejudice they endured, as well as the courage it took to persevere. He's a dear friend and invaluable member of our community, and he will forever be missed. But mm -hmm. being able to talk about that taught us so much about that era that so many people just kept it to themselves, yeah. and that's why he is such a valuable person. Yeah. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel, and download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.